This is a video in clinical medicine from the New England Journal of Medicine. Pulled elbow, also called annular ligament displacement or radial head subluxation, is a common injury of the arm among children younger than six years of age. The injury is unique to this age group because the radial head is less bulbous in infants and young children than in older persons and may easily become displaced. Reduction of a pulled elbow is a simple treatment for a common pediatric orthopedic problem and may be performed in the outpatient setting. The procedure generally results in immediate correction of the condition. The video reviews the anatomy of the annular ligament of the radius and the indications and contraindications for reducing a displaced annular ligament. It also demonstrates the recommended techniques for reduction and explains the appropriate aftercare. The annular ligament encircles the neck of the radius and holds it tightly in place against the ulna. This maintains the position of the proximal radius in relation to the ulna and the capitellum while allowing a 180 degree rotation. When there is forceful longitudinal traction, such as when a child is pulled or lifted by the arm, the radial head is pulled underneath the annular ligament. The ligament then becomes entrapped proximal to the radial head at the level of the radiocapitellar joint. The reduction of a pulled elbow is a straightforward procedure. First, ensure the child's history and the findings on physical examination are consistent with the diagnosis. The child's history may include a witnessed event of forceful traction, however, other mechanisms have also been described. Physical examination should reveal pseudoparalysis, with the child voluntarily keeping the limbs still to minimize discomfort. There will be pain with movement most commonly related to supination and pronation, rather than flexion and extension. In most cases, there will be tenderness to palpation on the lateral side of the elbow. However, an absence of this tenderness does not rule out the diagnosis. An affected child holds the elbow in a slightly flexed position with the hand pronated. Further examination should also reveal a normal looking elbow without effusion, bruising, or obvious deformity. Radiographs are almost always normal in cases of pulled elbow, so radiography should be reserved for cases in which the diagnosis is not clear. However, if radiography is performed, the positioning used to obtain a radiograph of the elbow is often therapeutic in reducing the displacement. The contraindications to performing a reduction are few. If the child's history or physical examination reveals information that is consistent with fracture, such as a fall onto the arm from a substantial height, deformity of the elbow, or any swelling or bruising, then radiographs should be obtained to confirm or rule out a fracture. If the radiograph does not show fracture or effusion, then attempting reduction may be considered. No equipment is required for the reduction of a pulled elbow. The clinician's hands should be washed thoroughly as part of standard precautions. To prepare the parent or caregiver, explain that some discomfort may be associated with the procedure. The child may cry or scream, and this may continue for several minutes after the radial head has been subluxed and relocated. Two techniques can be used to correct a pulled elbow. The supination technique is the classic method. However, some studies that have compared the supination technique with the hyperpronation technique indicate that pronation is more successful. Both techniques will be demonstrated. To perform the supination technique, seat the child on the parent or caregiver's lap with the child facing you. Clasp both the hand and elbow of the affected arm. Your fingers or thumb should overlie the radial head. Neither the positioning of your fingers or thumb 
nor the starting position of the affected arm is critical to the success of the procedure. Supinate and flex the forearm until you feel the ligament move back into position. You may feel or hear a click as the ligament is reduced. If the reduction is successful, the child should be pain-free and able to move the arm normally, including being able to reach for an object above the head in 5 to 30 minutes. Hyperpronation can be the primary method used to reduce a pulled elbow, or it can be used if the supination technique has failed. Seat the child on the parent or caregiver's lap with the child facing you. Clasp the hand of the affected arm as you would in a handshake. Use your free hand to support the patient's elbow. Hyperpronate the patient's wrist. You may feel or hear a click as the ligament is reduced. If the reduction is successful, the child should be pain-free and able to move the arm normally, including lifting the affected arm above their head in 5 to 30 minutes. Most reductions of a pulled elbow will be successful after a single attempt. If an initial attempt fails, however, the procedure may be repeated or the alternate technique may be used. If three to four attempts fail, re-examine the arm carefully from shoulder to fingertips and obtain a radiograph to rule out fracture. Then splint the elbow at approximately 90 degrees, even if the child presents with the arm more fully extended, and refer the child to an orthopedic surgeon. In the majority of such cases, the affected elbow will reduce spontaneously during the period of immobilization. When a pulled elbow has been successfully reduced, aftercare is minimal. Children may resume normal activity as soon as they wish. However, parents and caregivers should be advised that the condition may recur. Clinicians should counsel caregivers about how to reduce the risk of recurrent subluxation. For example, advise them to avoid pulling on the arms and avoid lifting or swinging the child by the arms. Clinicians may also consider providing parents with instructions on how to reduce a pulled elbow at home, particularly if this is not the first time the child has had pulled elbow. The reduction of pulled elbow is a simple and straightforward intervention that can be performed in an outpatient setting with rapid results. Clinicians should become competent in treating this common pediatric injury.